Uninterrupted Media present LSU Odyssey Oddcast. With your host, Lon Philip Stamos. What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Today, as well as yesterday, I should also say, um, LSUodyssey.com uploaded about four or five articles. Um, deep, 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 deep dives on the National Signing Day front. Uh, deep dive, behind-the-scenes look at how Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase have, you know, made history here with the Cincinnati Bengals. We've got um, all sorts of other things in the works. We just put out an interview with Keishon Booty's father, M. Booty. You know, I kind of consider that interview to be a failure on my part as an interviewer. I, I failed in that interview, but, you know, I think M is a difficult subject to interview, a difficult person to, to get um, information out of, which is exactly what, you know, exactly how it should be. And I failed as an interviewer, but we still included the interview on the site. I felt like the fans would still rather read that than nothing. And I don't know, I consider the piece to be a failure. So, you know, not, not meaning that as an excuse, but actually, you know, I'm giving myself no excuses here by just giving you the bare honest truth. I consider it a failure. Um, but, you know, we've, we've really put, packed a punch on that site with a lot of different things. And the National Signing Day piece that we just put out has our picks for Jacoby, Harold, Caleb, John Rutledge, got a ton on there, and uh, a lot of nitty-gritty information, all about LSU's 2022 season on the horizon, top, you know, best 11 Tigers of the 2021 season, you know, we just did number six, Jack Besh, which is a blistering piece, you know, kind of investigating why 2021 didn't go as well as it actually could have because he was the number one target for LSU. After Butte went down, he should have had around eight plus touchdowns, only finished with three. And, you know, we're kind of, we kind of talk about what Brian Kelly and this 2022 LSU staff have planned for Jack. Um, and that's not all. That's just the tip of the iceberg with what we've got coming. And, you know, to kind of be a companion piece for our National Signing Day uh, article, I would like to, um, you know, talk about, highlight Harold Perkins here. You know, Harold Perkins has been the subject of much uh, controversy, discussion, and analysis over the past year and a half as LSU have tried uh, to, to, to sign this guy, the number one linebacker of the 2022 class out of Texas. You know, he also doubles at the position of run, running back as well. Ran for 1,194 yards as a senior. 18 rushing touchdowns. You know, he's rushing for 17.8 yards per carry. Okay? And then as a receiver, you know, every pass is over 21 yards. 300 yards straight up on the dot. Three receiving touchdowns as well. You know, the, he just kept proving that there was nothing he couldn't do as far as uh, the game of football is concerned, you know. He focused a little bit more offensively than on defense, you know, in kind of a kind of a bid to keep him fresh and healthy for you know, college. And it was kind of interesting, you know. There was a plan, there was a vision there at, at Cy at Cy Park, where you know, 
2020, they kind of had him splitting it between offense and defense. 2019, he was all defense, getting the linebacker position down. And then now, you've got him playing more offensively. You know, 29 29 tackles, three sacks, or sorry, two sacks, three tackles for loss. Three interceptions, though, too. A forced fumble, fumble recovery. You know, (laughs) he's a playmaker, playmaker machine, this kid. I mean, oh my God, forcing a fumble and recovering on the same play. He had a 96-yard interception return this last season. Three to go along with the the other two INTs, so three total on the season. Incredible statistics. And, uh, you know, he hardly played on defense. But just a stat stuffer. Breaks up the passes. You know, pressures the quarterback. Adds the sacks to his game. Patrols that middle of the field. And playing on offense is only going to make him a better player as well. Especially, you know, playing receiver. I think he's going to be better in coverage as well. Showing he can pull off those interceptions too. It's just this, this guy is the number one linebacker of 2022. Without question, decommitted from AM the other night. You know, that was a big Monday piece of news. Decommits from AM. Does that open the door for LSU or is that opening up the door for Billy Napier's Florida? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Texas AM, I believe, are a distant third in this race. But I believe this is a neck and neck race between. LSU and Florida, and at this point, you will see exactly who we believe is trending on our National Signing Day piece there on LSUodyssey.com. Go Tigers!